Hey, welcome back, everybody. Or is it me who should be welcome back? I'm John Zadar. This is May 3rd. It is Tuesday, and you're watching On Top and Hot. Now, I've been gone for a little while. We've had a situation with our Penny Boys YouTube channel. YouTube says we've had too many violations. Eh, wrong answer. We've never had any. So we are trying to get this resolved, but as you can imagine, with a huge organization like this, you just can't get the personal service you want. So it's taking time. But in the meantime, we discovered that this YouTube channel, Stocks Wizard, which we weren't using anymore because it was screwing up the algorithms with our other one, is still here. So I'm going to make use of this one. Now, what I normally do is I share my DD with you on OTC and penny stocks. And the truth of the matter is, folks, I'm not playing a whole lot of OTC stocks right now. But I am playing the heck out of penny stocks. I'm on the NASDAQ primarily. I'm playing a lot of small price stocks under a dollar, just over a dollar, somewhere in there. And there's a lot of action over there. So I've got a few stocks that caught my attention today while I was trading. Some were on the NASDAQ, some were on the OTC. Some were running for silly reasons if no reason at all and others haven't started running yet and you may want to get in on it so let's go see what I found <laughs> you know it occurs to me if you ever can't find me and you're looking just come on over here to the otcmarkets.com website chances are this is where I'm at I spend a lot of time here every day for one main reason it's current it's never outdated Fiener and the SEC update this site every single day do you know how much energy and frustration that saves me from having to do Google searches sorting through all that old information I love this site so we are looking at JZZI Jazz Technologies and this was brought to my attention today by a fellow tweeter by the handle of together we appreciate it together. I'm sharing it with everybody now. This is a stock I think has a very strong potential of running. They are in a hot sector that they're working with now, NFTs, but they do other things as well. But they're targeting a sector of the NFT market, which not many, if any, are doing. And it's a little interesting. Let me see what you think after I show you. So JZZI finished today at 0049, just about a half a penny. They're on the pink tier, they're current. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. Now these are important ticks. These are important things you want to see ticked over here and I feel confident seeing them. Now if you see a stock that doesn't have them, Short trades, I would feel confident to get in there and do your trade and get out before any hot water burns you. But if you're looking at a stock for long hold, I would look for these. And that would be an important factor at that point. So what does Jazz Technologies do? Well, I got to tell you, this is one of the best descriptions I've read for a company. It really is what they do in a nutshell. Jazz Technologies, Inc. is a diversified technology company rolling up projects and partnerships in two distinct business sectors that operate cohesively. One, it's digital media business, which includes online media and apps, content creation, digital marketing, streaming video content, publishing, and free over-the-air television, which they call Eye on TV, all targeted at the active adult 55 plus generation. That's right, they're after the senior market with all of that. The second portion of their business is focused on biotechnology and bioscience acquisitions related to human life extension and human longevity that can be immediately leveraged to support improved quality of life for aging populations. Again, they're after that senior market. And everything I've read, that is what they're targeting. And believe it or not, the news we're looking at now is about NFTs. And again, they are targeting the senior market. I'm not sure how everybody feels about that, but there's a heck of a lot of us out here. <laughs> so what was the relative volume since there was no real catalyst today? This is heads up news because I think this has a very good likelihood of getting a strong surge. Normally she does one point well. There was only a couple thousand difference here, maybe about 10,000 share difference, not a lot of difference. She's doing about 1.2 million shares a day. So she's under the radar. I guess that's what we could say. Let's look at the share structure. Okay, we don't have the floats listed here. I normally look at unrestricted. That is normally as close as you're going to get, but we got nothing there. Um, I normally don't like the one that says float because it's outdated. Look at that, 2014. 
most of them are i don't know why then you got the held at dtc which is a good secondary but these are transient stocks that are moving through it's just like a picture we caught there so i don't know if that's actually the real float i'll tell you what i'll do a little bit of homework and flash it right there bingo there you go so now you know i don't know yet but whatever it is that's what it is <laughs> all right what about our financials jazzy making any money yet uh, well, they made 5000 That's not $5. We got these triple zeros here you put behind there. So for the year, they made $5,000. Are they doing anything now? Uh, no, we've got nothing going on. So they definitely need some revenues coming in. Disclosures, I normally come over here not for the financials because we know they're all current, right? They're current, so their financials are current. But if you do want to really learn about the company, instead of running around on Google or reading news, come on over here, grab the most recent quarterly or annual report, and jump into it. There's some accounting in there. If you don't want to read the accounting, just bypass it. Go on down the page, and it's all paragraphs, subtitled and headlined, so you can see what each one is about. There's a lot there. You're not going to want to look at it all, but it'll give you the history from the day the company was conceived to where it's at right now. It is the best way to do your homework on a company. But I come over here looking for 8Ks and I don't see any SEC filings here. So let's go take a look at that news. Now the news really elucidates on their description. They told us that they were into biotechnology company that is for human longevity. And they see back here in November, they are getting into their first acquisition to start moving these type of products. Then they tell us uh, halfway through November that they are joining with GenBio, Nutrific, and NutraEdge Bioscience to create new bioscience products focused on what they do, longevity. Then they got another company up here, Five Therapeutics, that they just signed a letter of intent with that they're going to try to acquire there too. Now, I haven't done any homework with any of the biotechnologies. Actually, I wasn't even aware of it. I came over here because of the news that came out today. Now, it is catalyst news, but as I said, targeting the senior market, I don't know if people truly understand the factor involved here. There's a lot of people, and when you see what the news says, you might understand understand why they're targeting seniors. So let's just jump up to the news that came out today. So they tell us here, Jazz Technologies Inc. enters into agreement to license up to 12 million NFTs from its film, TV, and video content for digital marketing. NFTs are hot folks. They are doing multiple billions. I think they did $40 billion last year or something like that from $100 million the year before. So it's growing at an astronomical rate. So we read here that Jazz Technologies has entered into a purchase agreement whereby Data Boss Inc. will purchase the non-exclusive NFT license production rights to up to 12 million NFTs of video content owned or licensed by Jazz Technologies. Now that's very important. Non-exclusive means they can resell this again and again and again. These people get to use it but it's not all theirs. Database Inc. has agreed to pay Jazz Technologies $1.2 million for the license. They're just getting a license to use these images and pictures. That's it, boy, that's good money, right? That's what comes when you have licenses. Um, but check this out, they are being paid in Shuba Coin, a cryptocurrency developed and launched by Neil Sant and Data Boss Inc. So, Data Boss created a cryptocurrency called Shub Coin, and they're paying Jazz Technologies $1.2 million in Shub Coin. So, Jazz must think Shub Coin is going to be something as well. They go on to tell us that the market for NFTs reached $41 billion in 2021 and $100 million in 2020, nearly matching the total value of the entire global fine art market. The content to which Jazz Technologies has rights pursuant to agreements includes a variety of images, movie stock, TV stock, outtakes, and B-roll footage. In all, 
Raw footage accounts for over 1 million images from video and stills, each of which can be artistically produced into numerous NFTs. NFTs can vary in value from a few dollars to a few thousand dollars, and Jazz Inc. plans to create over 5 million NFTs from this material and market them through their online database of 30 million seniors and through social media channels. Now, I had to stop and think about this. You're selling NFTs to seniors. You know, N NFTs are even beyond cryptocurrency. I know they're not that complicated, but if you're not into any of this, it's all really a foreign language to you. So for me to see NFTs being attractive to senior citizens, boy, I just didn't see the connection and I'm still not quite sure how. However, they say they have social media that already reaches 30 million. So maybe they'll educate them. Now consider what they're selling. TV outtakes, movies, old movies, probably classics, you know, movies that people like my age have seen and grown accustomed to and are fans of. We would love to own an NFT of such and such a movie. So I think, and when you got millions, millions of NFTs being sold, there very well could be a market there. But I think it's a surprise market. I really don't know how I feel about it. They also add to this by saying this is the first of what we plan as a major content licensing agreement in the entertainment industry. Very first one was 1.2 million. We plan to use the sales of NFTs to generate significant revenue for the company on an ongoing basis. It's a natural revenue stream for us, employing our digital marketing to sell NFTs based on the potential wide array of content. So they already own all this old content and they have all this senior market and now they've decided to get into the NFTs and make use of it. It does make sense to me. So let's go take a look at that chart and see if it makes sense to us. So we're going to be doing our charting over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got it for signing up for a free account at TD Ameritrade. So can you. Just keep your account open and you can use TOS just like I am. So that is a six month, four hour chart for JZZI. And we got a good high back here of two and a half cents, but it's inflated. It just tagged it, really didn't stay up there. We're closer here to a uh, more superficial high of just about two cents, but really I'm looking at about there for her average high and that is about 1.4 cents. She's been under the 200 here all the way until she hit her low bubble here of about 10 days ago maybe at 0031. She was falling fast. You can see she was grasping at the 200 until she couldn't touch it anymore and then fell quick. Now what's interesting is we do have a surge here, but this is April 22nd. There is no news press. Now there may be a Twitter account and they put something out on that. That would definitely help. But news presses, it's been bone dry since December. Today was the first piece of news we had. So she got a 100% jump here in three days. She went from 003 to 006, hit the 200. Now folks, that's impressive. She was under everything, even under the 10. You don't want to be in a stock that's under the 10. You want that price to be on top of the blue line at least. So this was under everything. Now it's on top of everything and teasing the 200. Let's come on into that 20 day, one hour view. All right, so we see the price is falling ever so evenly as is the 200 day SMA. And when that price shot through and hit that high, it actually leveled out the 200 day SMA right here. Now I noticed the MACD has got a crazy bow in it right now. She's pushing down and it, she doesn't look very good. You know, she looks like she's going to fall some more. The RSI is showing no help either way. Not going to lift it, not going to push it down. It's right there in the middle. But what I see down here is this new tool I've been using. And I've been using this now regularly for over a month. And I really like it for entries and exits. It's quite responsive. It's quite quick. Well, I guess what it really does is it compares the price, the current price, to older prices. And it's some mathematical thing. Now, I want you to look at this here. I'm going to lift this up so you can see it a little bit better. Now, this has no ceiling. It can go as high as it wants, though the green is the soft ceiling and the red is the soft floor. And that's 100. Zero is right there. Well, when it hits that low, look, it rarely comes below it. I mean, it could, but it rarely does. Right there it did. And it doesn't stay down there very long. 
So when it hits this low and starts to come up, as soon as I see that curve up towards the yellow, that is a buy signal. Now it's not a guarantee, but we're looking at all of our tools. If things are starting to turn up, we have our MACD on top and I see she's on a low, boy, you can catch that right there and ride that up. And when you get over the green and you see it start coming down and cross the green, get out, get out. Doesn't matter if you were in it just for 10 minutes and it doesn't matter if you only made 10%. The fact is you got in and out and made your money. Now I realize when you're dealing with OTC stocks, we do have to cover those transaction fees. A lot of these companies are charging $7 to get in, $7 to get out. That's $14. Folks, that's a lot of of profit even on the OTC market in these markets right now that is why I have been playing the Nasdaq I have been playing penny stocks under a dollar just over a dollar they move safely I can get out easily enough without losing much money you know these small prices they move from five to four you just lost 20 percent 20 percent going from a nickel to four cents that's scary as heck especially when most of your money is locked up or gone so the nasdaq you're not paying any transaction fees that's 14 extra dollars i can trade in and out with doesn't cost me anything and it's in my price range and when it makes that jump get out folks the market is too risky right now. There's just too much going on in the world between epidemics, inflation, uh, maybe a food shortage, wars. We have just got so much on the table that the gains can't be trusted to stay there very long. So get used to taking change instead of dollars. You will do fine if you take 20 tens and don't try to get that one 200. I promise you, it's much safer to get in and out as fast as you can with some gains. Just keep doing it over and over. Take a little, take a little, take a little. At the end of the day, you've made $100, $150 by taking 10 and 20, and it's not costing you anything on these transactions. And there's a lot of stocks moving on the small caps, a lot of them. Let's jump down to the five day, five minute. All right, look at that. That is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna draw right there. I can see we got a strong channel right here. She does not want to move. That's one, two, three, four, five days she's been in that channel. But these bounces, look at that. Same size, going up and up, and she just keeps coming right from the top. Where was that? So she is moving almost, is that right? Is that almost two cents, four, six, up to, six so she's moving one and a half cents in each of those jumps i don't know if this is a low float i don't presume it does we saw the dtc had about what 357 million and i don't presume it's any lower than that you have that advantage on me but you can see what she does with whoo no volume i mean there's not much volume there at all and that would be the key here folks this doesn't look strong at all doesn't look like she's going to take off. And the news came out today, today. This is today right there. There's our five minute. I'll break this down to the minute so we can get a not a lot of volume, not a lot of price action. She had a poke at the beginning of the day and really just couldn't hold it at all. Pretty much came right back down to where she was, right? She's right there. So this could be an opportunity, a good buying opportunity, but the truth of the matter is I don't know how appealing this is going to be. You first have to get seniors to understand that, well, what an NFT is and why they would want one and how they can benefit from it. I understand that a lot of these old time movies, the old folks will have an affinity with, that they'll have an attachment to. Maybe one reminds them of their wife or something. You know, you can give them his birthday gifts. I really don't know. But if they advertise it properly, this could be a big market because first off, people my age, most of us have money in the bank. We'd love to spend a nice, who wants to get their wife a ring? I'll give her an NFT, you know what I mean? Whatever, the first love boat that ever came out on TV, yay! So. This could be a good buy opportunity. Let's back this up a little bit. Um, but I wouldn't go deep into this, folks. Everything is speculation right now if you're playing a swing play. I would just get a starter position on this one. But she is at a low right now. She was overlooked. She's under the radar. Whatever was going on today, and it was a very volatile day. The market was all over the place, except the OTC. The OTC had very little activity today. I had a hard time finding runners. I mean, it was scary. I'm going down my favorite OTC markets page for the, the trades to see how many trades each company is doing. 
oh my God, I couldn't find anything over 25. I found one over a thousand. We're actually going to look at that one. But it didn't have a catalyst. It had talk, it had chat, but no catalyst. And it had over a thousand trades. And that was early in the day. We'll see what it is. Well, let's go see what it is now. So, last words about JZZI. I find it very interesting. They've got two acquisitions coming up. Keep that in mind with these biotechnology companies. They also are working with some products that they were doing a joint venture with. We read that in the news, not actually going in the news. So, there's some DD for you to do if you're really interested. There could be a lot more going for this company than I even covered. All right, let's go take a look at that next one. All right, now this was an interesting stock today. It ran 92% and there is no catalyst. I couldn't find any reason for it really running. This is ticker MAPT, Map Intelligent Inc. Finished the day just over half a penny, over 92% gains without catalyst. She's on the pink tier and current. She's got her green ticks, looks real good, and she's got independent directors. Now that tells us that she has aspirations of uplisting. Could be to the next tier on the OTC, the QB, or the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. We don't know because no one said anything. But you don't need independent directors unless you're going to uplist. And in either case, they're going to have to audit their financials to get there. And that's going to be a good thing. So what does this company do? Well, as you guessed, they're probably in the maps. Yes, they are. And they go on to tell you exactly what kind of maps because they don't map the outside. They map the inside. Big college campuses, big high-rise buildings, these multiplexes, they're very big buildings. And when an emergency happens, finding people can be difficult. So with different types of technology all hooked together. I don't know exactly. That's what DD's for. They have made it easy for early responders to find people in emergency situations and not waste critical time. And that is their primary product. But the most recent news, which was over a month ago, took a turn. I mean, it's totally different and it is a moneymaker as far as I can see, but it is completely different, but it's old. So that is not the reason it's running today, but it was running and there was a ton of volume around this company. She normally does 3.8 million shares a day. Today she did 151 million shares without any reason that I could find. Unbelievable. Maybe it's the money. Maybe she's kicking in some big bucks. Uh, no, no big bucks here. How about on quarterly? Nada, not a cent. <sighs> what are people running to? How about disclosures? Oh, I hate that. You see that? All you got to do is touch that. I'm trying not to, I promise. Uh, we're coming down to the SEC filings. The only thing we got is two months ago, their latest annual report. That's going to have everything you want to know about this company, even the stuff they don't want to talk about in news presses. The risks, news presses, <laughs> the risks, they will cover that in there as well. So there's nothing going on here. Let's take a look at that news. As I said, the most current news was over a month ago. And all of this is about different contracts and partnerships that they're making using their MAP product. And I didn't get into a lot of that. What I did look at was this one here, this latest digital transformation offering, NFT minting. The company is now going to start minting NFTs for other people. People who want to mint NFTs, but they're going to use LiDAR. They're going to use LiDAR and take these like holographic 3D images that will be on the NFT and they said they can do anything. You let them know what it is you want and they'll do a 3D LiDAR picture of it and put it on the NFT. So a lot of companies could start putting their NASCARs up there or you know maybe even a roundabout thing of a person you know, a superstar that you're into. I don't know, but that was a month ago. So there really is nothing happening. So why do you think it ran? Well, when in doubt, check out Twitter. Now I'm over here at Twitter at the most popular. We could go to latest, but it's late in the day. Who knows what we're going to get. But this is the sort of stuff we're reading over here. Stop the hate and come play. Map T. Uh, you think Map T keeps going? Map T, this is not something to ignore. Map T going to 400%. There's double zero eight. Happy to turn up Tuesday. See, folks, there's nothing here, is there? There's no news. Churn and burn. The next one. I, I mean, I'll, I'll go way down. Let's see here. Could continue tomorrow. <laughs> 
We have no catalyst. What you've got is chatter. Lots of chatter. I can't even find the end to it. Map T, pivot to NFT. Scamming their shareholders like Bala is scamming his NFT stupid Wolfgang cult. There's even bad chatter here. I mean, good chatter, bad chatter, technicals, but no catalyst. And still, the thing was tearing it up today. So let's go take a look at that chart. Someone mentioned 400%. Did it really get that high? So now we're looking at MAPT on the six month, four hour chart. And back about five months ago, we're about two cents. And a couple days ago, we were at double zero one five. Most of this time, she too has been under the 200, scraped it once, and hasn't been able to get close until today. And oh my God, look at that volume, folks. Compared to everything else, that is, it's a freak. It's a freak of nature. She took a huge jump today. Now, I want you to take notice here, folks. Look at the price, the square bar, underneath the 10. That is the worst position your price can be in. In my opinion, it absolutely is. Let's say that you have a stock that's running up, 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 and every SMA is underneath you. You're above them all. Then you go below the blue. Your little 10, you go below it. That is your first sell signal. That is the first sign of depression. It's falling. It's falling through the very first SMA, which was that close. So your losses, when it falls underneath the 10, are minimal. How far down is the 20? How far down is that? You may have to come all the way down to test it. It's, it's smarter to sell when a stock is bouncing. There's nothing wrong with selling at the top when you see a fall coming and you don't want to ride that fall. Take your little gains, watch it fall to the bottom, and then get back in at the bottom because you know she's probably going to go up if you've been reading your charts right. So even if this is all the way at the top, if your price goes underneath the blue 10 day SMA, that is your first token sign that things are going bad. You need to get back on top or chances are she's going to slowly fall, if not fast. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. All right. So she is on the 50 day here, started to pull away and fall from that. The 200 comes into the picture now and magic boom she jumps today nothing new in that picture looking at the five day five minute all right so yesterday she closed at double zero just over double zero two and went to double zero eight so it was just under 400 percent gains from yesterday's close to 11 11 in the morning and then she took a fall she didn't even make it to the 50. That's a very unique bounce right there. She could have been bouncing on an SMA on another time bracket. That's normally what happens if you see them bouncing in the middle of the air. Or there could be a support somewhere like that. You know, we, we see right there is where the direction stopped and changed and halted. Right there. So that is a good focus point on the price. And that is where it came down below and came back up. And now look. We're right back to that same point. It's the only break it took in that surge. That is a momentum play. If it didn't have a break there, this could have easily kept falling all the way down. You need stocks to take a break and build a step. Right there is our little step. That's all it took to hold this from falling all the way to the 50 and maybe further. Came back up, is now sitting smack dab on top of it with the worst technicals I have ever seen. Yeah, the technicals are horrible. She's just fallen off of the uh, signal line here. Our RSI is clear down at 38. And look at that. I told you this is a soft floor, but it can go infinitely it can just keep falling and right now we're at 188 200 is like the next soft floor and she's at 188 so she looks like she's going to continue to fall as soon as the market opens up tomorrow but then why wouldn't she she's running on chatter bad chatter good chatter twitter twatter <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that goes to show you that a stock can move just from people getting excited about it. Just excitement alone can be a catalyst. So don't overlook that as a stimulant for your price to move. All right, let's go take a look at the last stock of the night. 
All right, this next stock is a perfect example of the kind of stocks I've been playing. This is TMDI Titan Medical. No, not medical companies. <laughs> This finished at 57 and a half cents, almost 35% gains, and is on the NASDAQ. That's what I mean. I am now trading penny stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, though most of them are really on the NASDAQ. And the reason for that, well, it's multifold. First off, there's no transaction fees, right? I don't have to pay $14 to get in and get out, $7 each way. So that money is mine to keep. Second, the price right now is 57 and a half cents. If I see the, the ask go to 62, 63 cents, I can buy one share for nothing. It doesn't cost me anything and I can buy one share at a higher price and try to help push my price up. Oh yes, I can. The other thing I like is that NASDAQ stocks really trade hard pre-market, aftermarket, especially pre-market. Folks, if you're not trading pre-market, you're missing a lot of activity. There's a lot going on there. Now, TD Ameritrade won't let me start till 7 in the morning and I'm missing it because there's some great activity at 5 and 6 in the morning. Yes, there is. You don't need any special permission. You don't need any special qualifications. You can trade pre-market. There's no special rules. There's nothing different. The only thing you got to remember is when you put in your trade where it says day, you've got to change day to have extension in there. It could say day plus extension. It can say good till canceled plus extension or just extension. But if you don't have extension, it's just going to ignore the order until the bell goes off. So what does this company do? Well, Titan Medical Inc. is focused on the research and development and planned commercialization of computer-assisted robotic surgical technologies for application in a minimally invasive surgery. These are robot surgeons. These are what can be used across the country with 5G. You have somebody in California doing surgery in, in Florida because he's using a robot. And that's their specialty. And they had news today. So there was some increase. What was the relative volume today? Ah, uh, she normally does about a quarter million shares. Today she did 3.2 million. That's what, about uh, 4, 12, 13. Unlucky 13. But think about it. If you are watching the market today, you know it was a very volatile market not on the OTC, but everywhere else it was very volatile and she was on those waters, the NASDAQ. So to maintain 3.2 million, I think she did pretty good. So what is the share structure? All right, they're not going to give us a whole lot of information here. We see we've got a outstanding share count for everybody, you, me, management, hedge funds, everybody. That is 111,202,000. I came over here and I did a search and this is the number that comes up the most. Public float is virtually the same. It's 111,110,000. So there's like 110,000 shares in management, in institutions. Not very impressive. Not very impressive at all. But that is what the float is. Let's go see what our financials are. Well, now we're talking, now we're talking, look at this, folks. We had $20 million at the end of 2021. And you know what's most impressive here? Look what they list as cost of revenue. Nothing. Gross profit. They got to keep all that money. I see companies doing $400 million in a quarter, and they spend $398 million. Yeah, they got to keep $2 million, but oh my God, $398 million in your hands and out of your hands. Goodness, they got to keep every red cent. That's impressive. Disclosures, we got anything new over here? They got a lot more information here. I'm really surprised. Um, no, those are their reports and today. That's going to have to do with the news. We might as well look at the news because it's more informative. This was so the headline reads, Titan Medical announces purchase order from Medtronic. Titan Medical Inc., a medical device company focused on the development and commercialization of innovative surgical technologies for single access robotic assisted surgery, today announced a receipt of $2.6 million purchase order from Medtronic. The order covers the purchase of instruments and cameras that will be used in preclinical activities and the evaluation of Titan Medical 
as a potential manufacturing and supply partner for Medtronic. Also, oh, they're actually looking at this purchase, these pieces of equipment, as a preliminary criteria to partner with them. These two companies are going to work together more closely because they tell us here Medtronic has been a great partner for Titan since 2020, and we're excited about the opportunity to further our work together. Our manufacturing team and capabilities continue to expand at our operations in Chapel Hill. With this order, we will produce instruments and cameras for Medtronic's evaluation and testing, in addition to producing instruments and cameras for our own single access RAS platform, Enos. Now, I was wondering, what the heck is Enos? So I came down here and it's actually in their description of themselves down here. They tell us here that the Eno system includes multi-articulating instruments designed to allow surgeons an increased range of motion in a confined space. Titan intends to initially pursue gynecology surgical indications with the Enos system. So they're going to be using this primarily for gynecology. I don't know if that'd be the first place. Well, we're not going to get into all that. All right, so that's the new... News. That's the news, and it is a big deal. It is a big contract, and it is a preliminary criteria for these two companies to come together. Now, they do make one point here, and I guess it's important enough for me to mention here. For clarity, these agreements are between Medtronic and Titan Medical, Inc., Titan Medical is not affiliated with Titan Spine, which Medtronic acquired in 2019. So for whatever that's worth, that's what it is. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looked like. I wonder if she got higher than her 32%. Woo-wee! Look at that fall. My goodness. This is TMDI, six-month, four-hour chart, and we had a hellacious fall here on 11-11. I went and looked this up, had to know what happened. This was their third quarter financial results. Doesn't look good at all. Boy, did she fall for a long, long time. She hit a low here of 38 cents. She was at a high of $1.78. And today on that news, she finally got above the 200. Now, she has been above it before. False alarm. She came right back down even under the 50. But that was the only time, and that was over a month ago. Let's come in on that 20-day, one-hour view. See if we can learn anything here. So she broke the 200 here. That was 20 days ago and then again today. The volume today was incredible compared to the other volume, but it's regular. The volume is regular here, just nothing to brag about. Technicals were strong, but are all pulling back right now. She has broke the 200 by a long shot. The 10 day is way up here and the 20 is way down here. That is a... Uh, eight cents difference there. So that, that would be a big drop if you were looking for a test. So if this price got underneath that 10, uh-uh. You don't want to hang on until it falls down here to see if it's going to bounce. No, you don't. Let's come on in on that five day, five minute. All right, so we had a big bounce. First thing, boy, this news must have come out yesterday afternoon. I don't know. I found it this morning. It said it had just been put out four minutes ago, but that doesn't mean anything. That's just when Yahoo Finance posted it. So it could have actually come out. Now, let me see. All right, there's the line. It is today. It is today, but what time was that? Wow. That came out at 7.30 in the morning, so you had two hours to play this bounce. But look, there was no bounce. Nothing going on. Once it had that huge spike, poor guy here, somebody bought in up there, fell all the way back down here, laid flat until the bell, and then she started to rock and roll. Not easily, but she did rock and roll, and she only consolidated, only went sideways. She wasn't going up or down. People were buying and selling in that same price zone, and once they were all done in that price zone, had to go somewhere else because nobody wanted to play in that zone. And boom, she took off. She hit a high here of almost 61 cents today, starting down the day before at 42. So you're looking at about roughly 30% there, roughly. Well, 34% is what they tell us. And she did dip back a little bit, but she's way beyond her 50% gains. Well, if you go to where she opened up, because this is a law. I'm not going to count that as part of the surge, not at all. So I'm going to go from here to there, 
and let's find our center about right there maybe oh all right I was over here looking look where she lined up I'm always impressed when I do that so she came up and down 50% she threw away 50% and stuck here and I consider that normal you go up I expect it to come down 50% and if it sits on this 50% line that's good for me if I'm in it long but if you're in it short you don't want to wait for that 50% fall. Get the heck out when it hits that high. How do you know it's falling? Well, if you have two reds in a row, you may want to take it seriously. You may want to take it seriously that she is on a fall. Now, she may bounce back, but folks, this is a volatile market. Waves are coming from all directions. When you see gains on the table, those are real. Those are real live gains that are in your hand. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Forget the hope, forget the speculation, take what you can get and then come back and do it again and take a little more. Would you not play slot machines if all you were getting was five, 10, $15 winners? Oh man, I'm not getting any, shoot. If, if I knew I was gonna get five, 10, $15, I would play slot machines all day because how much is that gonna add up to if you do it often enough? Consistency, folks, is what's going to make you money in this market. Small gains taken repeatedly over and over. And if you play on the NASDAQ, you play your penny stocks, there's no trans transaction fees. You're not going to lose all that money playing in, playing out, playing in, playing out. You can't do that on the OTC. You can on the NASDAQ. Come on over, folks. Wow, I got to say, that was actually refreshing. I have missed talking with all of you. Honestly, it's been almost a week and you know this is a habit for me. Now, today's picks weren't the greatest picks, I know, but there are things going on there. Jazzy's got NFTs and so does MAPT. They're working with them. NFTs are definitely big business. There's no lie about that. Now, whether they're going to sell to seniors or not, that's yet to be seen. That's all probably going to be dependent on how they market these to their 30 million plus seniors. MAPT, they're working with a new type of NFT, that LiDAR, three-dimensional sort of thing, which is, you know, pretty technologically advanced. That could be hot. And then we have the robots being made for the medical industry. Now, folks, that's where everything is going. The 5G is what makes that all possible. Now that we have 5G working across the nation, we can start doing a lot of these big technologically advanced things that, well, seem like science fiction before. So this could be big as well. Now, I'm going to probably be bringing you more NASDAQ stocks because that's where I'm playing. That's where I'm seeing most of the activity. You got to remember, NASDAQ has a lot of people and a lot of money. That's where there's a lot of volume. You need all of those if you want to get your price to rise on your stock. But they're not investing in OTC stocks. They're investing on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, the American Exchange. So you've got to come up here. And the prices aren't that bad. I know we're used to these double zero ones and we want to get rich going to double zero two and double zero three. Folks, we're losing more money. We know this. We've been doing this for a long time. So come with me over to the penny stocks. We'll deal with stocks that are moving from 50 cents up to a dollar thirty. Doesn't matter if you only buy 10 shares. You made some profit. Start getting used to taking small gains until we get out of this dark, cold atmosphere that we are in this bear cave and get into the sun again. Best I can say, folks, short trades, small gains, repetitious, consistently. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.